Yep, and and that's what I was saying, Perna. You know, the Milwaukee Bucks are having themselves a great season, and me, Tom Grassi, as a diehard fan of the Milwaukee Bucks, I I think that you know Giannis is just really solidifying his legendary career this season, and that's uh you know just it's been taking up a lot of my time. You know, it's it's tough yeah. being an undefeated team. You got the weight of the world on your shoulders, and and I I just love basketball. Go Avs. Go Bucks, go Nuggets. Oh, we choke in the red zone. That's not the that's not the line. Steer, we steer like the Bucks. You in the Steers. right direction. Welcome to another edition of the Grassy Perna Show. I'm Tom Grassy. That's Brandon Perna, and this is the Monday morning edition of G P S. Tommy boy, or as Packers call it, I N T. <laughs> Wow, what an all-time collapse we are watching for the Green Bay Packers football organization. Uh, okay, before okay. We, we've got so Vultures much. Out. I so, see you, Aaron Rodgers. I see you. Mm-hmm. I see mm-hmm. you, Perna. Mm-hmm. I see you. You know what? I was actually pretty fair to Rodgers in that video. So uh, the title. It's going to get you hooked, but I was fair. We got so much football to talk about today. Offense across the league sucks. (laughs) Every time, I mean, just the old offenses. Tom Brady, he was terrible in a win. Matthew Stafford, still terrible. Aaron Rodgers, not good. It's like... Terrible. even, Even the Chiefs, their offense was moving the ball, but they could only score 17 against the the, the Titans. It's just this whole year has been bizarre. Josh Allen throws picks. We're going to get to all that. We're going to start with your Packers because I know it was bad. And I legitimately laughed out loud this morning. So as you guys know, Tom and I uh, around... Let's see, here's nine. So it's about 7.30, 8 my time. We're chipping away at the the rundown. Uh, I had some stuff in there. I didn't see what Tom wrote when he hopped in because I was working on best and worst. And then I started reading what Tom put in the rundown. And I laughed out loud alone in my basement (laughs) when I read, when to start love to see what they have. (laughs) Question. And that's when I knew we are in the same. You are where I I have been as a football fan. Where yeah. <laughs> no longer are you even thinking about going to the playoffs. You're like, well, we got this guy Jordan Love back here. Maybe it's time to see what the kid can give us because everything else is not working. And uh, I laugh not at you, but just a deep understanding of the pain that is associated with that sentence. Like just to see you Packer fans thinking about, Hey, maybe we should see what Jordan love has this year when Aaron Rodgers comes back because he gives you the best chance to, to get to the, the super bowl, go all in with Rodgers money wise. It is, I think an exclamation point on just a batshit crazy football season. So I yeah. feel you, Tom, I, thought it was hilarious that the Packers lost to the Lions, uh, but I know your pain. It's, I'm not relishing in your pain. I'm just happy to have some company here. <laughs> the Broncos now have a better record than the Green Bay Packers. Good. Good. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not great. It's not good. It's not good. Um. Hey, yeah. man, I cursed the Chiefs. Uh, it's not my fault. 
Mike Vrabel and the Titans offense decided to stop giving Derrick Henry the ball. <laughs> 17 carries for Derrick Henry. <laughs> An offense not running the ball and giving it to their superstar running back. Derrick Henry, 17 carries for 115 yards. How many carries did he have in the second half? That's what I want to know. Never heard of it. Never, ever heard of it. Ooh. Can't imagine a team not giving it. I need, I need a lot of things. Ooh, get that statue ready. Okay, Whoa. let's talk let's talk about the Green Bay Packers a little bit. Yeah, let's it is. Yeah. Running the yeah. football is a problem for a lot of the teams struggling. So do yeah. Tell. So heading into this game, and what was supposed to be the get right game, the Lions had the worst defense in the league, ranked dead last, 32nd mm. overall. And uh we thought, okay, maybe. The offensive line is back to full health. The first time it really has been all together this season. You know, Bakhtiari's a left tackle. Elton Jenkins over a guard again. Josh Nyman over a tackle on the right side. Like, this is good. This is good. But, as you and I talked about this past Sunday night, last week, I had some optimism. I had some optimism. And... The reason I had optimism is because they really just gave the ball to Aaron Jones against the Bills. And yes, were they running when they were down like two scores? Yeah. Ultimately, did they win? No. But it gave me some hope that maybe they could take that game plan and execute it against a team that is going to be worse than the Buffalo Bills going forward, <laughs> which is just about every other team, right? That they're going to play, except maybe the Eagles, because the Bills lost yesterday. And they just didn't do it. Romeo Dobbs gets hurt very early in that game, so that hurts. Runyon gets hurt, but he winds up coming back. But Dobbs is hurt. Aaron Jones eventually gets hurt in that game. But before that, they're barely utilizing him. Now they are stacking the box, meaning the Lions defense, so it was tough to run the ball. But how you're not giving the ball to Aaron Jones, whether it is to run it and try to like break free, because Jam uh, Jamal Williams, I think he had 22 or 24 carries for around 80 yards, got that defense really, really tired. And throwing the ball just wasn't working. The offensive line was pretty good. The pocket for Rodgers was good, but made really, really terrible mistakes. Packers one time of possession. They had the same amount of drives as the Lions, and the three turnovers in the end zone just killed them. And Rodgers, it wasn't, oh, guys just aren't getting open. Sammy Watkins doesn't because Sammy Watkins is god-awful. But there's guys that are open, and Rodgers is just not getting them the football. So it's like you want to play this hero ball, but you're also not willing to let it go. So it, it boggles my mind. We're not giving it to Aaron Jones. The play calling is just atrocious. And the defense gets exhausted in the second half. And if this sounds familiar, it's because this is exactly what has happened for the past month. So, yeah. It's frustrating. So when I'm asking when do we start Jordan Love, it's not because I think we're going to win football games with Jordan Love. Because I think this team right now is fundamentally broken. Because it's the coaching staff, it's the QB, it's all the things, right? But once we're eliminated from the playoffs, which is going to be sometime likely soon. Well, luckily, there's a lot of teams not winning these days. Dude, I think there's like only three or five teams that have worse records than the Packers. Yeah, in the I entire mean, NFL. They're a bottom 10 team right now. I know. With Aaron Rodgers, who they're paying $50 million to. So the franchise is not going to go out and be like, oh, yeah, we're going to set our $50 million QB. But at some point, like when they're eliminated from the playoffs, which, again, will probably be soon. Maybe you see what you got. Rashawn Gary tore his ACL, yeah. who was basically one of our best guys on defense. That's He's nice. gone. He was number two in pressures this season. You know who number one is? Another guy the Packers are paying, Zadarius Smith. So that's fun. Just twist the knife a little bit more. School! gross so yeah uh, uh aaron jones though negative so that's a positive thing we'll hear about stokes and yeah, ankle uh, or something romeo dobbs but it's bad well it is it's bad if you would like to change your fortune why don't you check out 
DraftKings Sportsbook. Sundays are football, food, friends, and losing. No, 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 no. Winning. DraftKings Sportsbook. That's right. I'm partnering up with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, to share an incredible offer with all of you. New customers, all new customers who use code GPS when you sign up and bet $5 on any pregame money line wager, you'll receive an additional $200 in free bets if your bet cashes. Cha-ching! 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 That's a cash, cash register cashing your your bet. Uh, they said, do some sound effects, Perna. I said, okay. <laughs> I'll do my best. Now, uh, $5. It's beautiful. On any football team to win this weekend, you'll get an additional $200 in free bets if you're a new customer and that bet hits. Plus, with same game parlays, you can combine multiple bets from the same game to give yourself a shot at even bigger winnings all season long. Like if I'm Tom, I'm just going to start betting on how many uh, picks my QB might throw in the red zone, and I'm going to take the over because it's going to get worse. And if football ain't your thing, as Tom proclaimed at the beginning of this episode, basketball season is here. DraftKings has tons of ways for you to get on the court for some action. Again, download the app, link in the description, code GPS when you sign up. You'll get $200 in free bets if your bet hits with a $5 pregame football wager. GPS, GPS, that's your code that will navigate you to DraftKings. Uh, okay. When a football team is playing like the Packers, the Bad. issue is usually multifaceted. There's... Yep. Little nasty fingers everywhere, and they are screwing your chance to win. Now, sure, this is what I've I've seen with Russell Wilson. Um, everything looks worse when you're losing. Mm -hmm. He's missing guys that are open. He can't see him. But really, like my takeaway from the Packers and their struggles in that game. It's like the the chemistry is just not there with Rodgers and the receivers. And that's just because, like, Green Bay hasn't been able to have any consistency at the position this season. And it's not – it's like circumstances kind of outside of their control, right? It's injuries. Like, Dobbs – Dubs leaves that game. Watson's been hurt on and off. Lazard's been hurt on and off. And you're relying on Sammy Watkins to be the guy after that. And, uh, you know, him and Rogers didn't seem like they're on the same page. So, like, I think if you're a passing first sort of team and you don't have that. Which, why are we? Sorry, just, just asking. Why are you? I don't know why you are. Uh, but that's why they're struggling. And it's the same reason the Broncos have been struggling. Because if your passing game's not working, you need to lean on your run game. And if you can't do one of the, or vice versa, if you can't do either of those, or if you're screwed. Too. And we saw it with the Titans last night against the Chiefs because they could run the ball. The Chiefs key on it. And they've got Malik Willis back there who's clearly not ready to start in the NFL, but he also has no wide receivers to throw to. Like some of the plays where you, you, you see the, the angle the QB has of the receivers and there's just, there's nothing there and you've got a young quarterback you can't make any throws so you become one dimensional and uh right now uh let me let me just list some teams for you the packers the colts the texans the buccaneers the commanders the steelers the broncos do you know what all of those teams have in common tom they suck yeah and they have the fewest rushing touchdowns across the NFL this season. The Packers, the Colts, the Texans, and the Bucks each only have three. Commanders and Steelers have four. Broncos have five. Uh, then you got the Dolphins down there, the Bills. And we're seeing the Bills kind of not be able to lean on their run game, and it's hurting them a bit. The Raiders, the Rams, you've got all these teams – where they should be getting better play, not all of them, but about half of them there with their quarterbacks and their offenses. But they have no run game. 
And you can be a team like the Chiefs and not run the ball because your sure. quarterback will extend plays and make the passing game work like the running game. And usually we see Josh Allen do that as well, but the Packers can I, can't do it. The Broncos can I say, can I say something? Um, no, I'm going to just keep rambling. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show a clip from the game. Um, talking about chemistry. This isn't a chemistry issue. So Rogers is going to get sacked here. That's a decent pocket, right? Not too bad. You're thinking, oh man, there's nobody open. There's nobody to get the ball to. One, two. That's yeah, not yeah. a chemistry issue. No, I, I'm not saying it's a hundred percent chemistry. No, no, I know. But I'm, I'm saying, saying like into the game. If Devontae Adams is there, where yeah. Rodgers and, and, and Adams have mind melded and sure. they know exactly what the other guy's going to do, and Rodgers going to throw the ball to a spot in the end zone, like Watkins and him weren't on the same page. Uh, I think there was a couple plays like that, but you're right. And it's it's not every single play, but it, I've seen that shit all season with Russell Wilson, too, right? Like there are guys open on plays where he doesn't see them, he's not comfortable. Like I don't know why Rodgers doesn't make the throw there. And even that pick where he's trying to throw it to uh, Bob Tunyon that gets uh, picked off. Like, how many times have you seen Rodgers make that throw? And you're like, you're walking away going, oh, my God, how did he complete that? Right? Like, we see Rodgers do that like once a week. And it ain't happening right now. Instead, he still can do it. It's no, just he the can. Cons- the consistency is not there. And yeah. <clears throat> it's there's so many things. And now, like you mentioned, Devontae Adams. They're still running the offense like Devontae Adams is there. Yeah. And that is, again, the issue, whether that's Rodgers, whether that's the floor, whether that's both of them. And it's frustrating because on that play alone, they have two guys open. Basically, Tunyon and Lazard are running a similar route there. And Dylan is also open in the flat. Mm-hmm. But it's it's hero ball. Like, you look at that very last drive, and I mentioned this on the, the post game yesterday. You look at that very last drive, They have all their timeouts. They wind up burning one, but they have all their timeouts and they just need to move down the field. Like they're, they have like decent field position. They're like near the lions uh, side of the ball, the side of the field. And they just keep throwing the ball, like bombing it. And they have over a minute left to go. They have all their timeouts left. And it's like, what are you doing? Like take a short underneath route, try to hand the ball off a little bit. Like it, it, it's mind boggling that it's just like simple stuff. And I'm not trying to be in like an armchair QB or coach or GM, but there are things that are like blatantly obvious that they can do. And that's it. And like, let's talk about Luke Getze real quick because Luke Getze bears fans were ready to run him out of town three weeks ago. <laughs> they were like, they were at pitchforks. They had torches. And now, right. Look what has happened now that they've catered an offense for Justin Fields and Justin Fields is looking like a superstar. Yeah, I think, um, you know, you got to give new situations uh, time in the NFL. Patience is tough for fans. The Packers, I I get why fans would not want to do that because they've got, they've got their quarterback, their head coach. They've got, you know, all of that stuff there. But, yes, the Bears, like Justin Fields, starting to look pretty good. Yep. And I love the way they're calling the game for Justin Fields. Um, you can do that with with young quarterbacks, right? Yes. And older quarterbacks, you as a coach, you're thinking you're going to try to call the game to their strength, but these guys know what they want. And if they're going to change stuff out there, you're going to trust them to do it. And uh that's it's not working with the packers it's not working with the broncos certainly not working with the rams bucks and brady's get a win it's not really working there either and it's just bizarre this year um i do want to talk about the bears and dolphins uh because that's a game where well it was one game that felt like hey these are there here's two offenses clicking the dolphins and the bears uh and who the hell would have thought if we're talking about a bunch of bad offenses, we're not yep. lumping the Bears into that category this week. Yeah. Uh, also, 
three weeks though, like three weeks that offense has been doing well because they put up a bunch of points against the Cowboys too. And then they yeah. beat the Patriots before that. Uh, basically, when I do a video calling a quarterback a bust, they start playing well. You're welcome, Jets fans. You're welcome, Jets fans. You called you Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is a bust video? You did. You called him a fraud yesterday. Oh, Aaron Rodgers, 500 passing yards. 10 We're beating the Cowboys week. next week. Boom. Um, but I mean, Tua probably was the best quarterback this weekend. Three touchdown passes. What do you have? Like uh, 300 some yards. Where is Tua? He was great. He, uh, he had 302 yards, three tutties, yeah. zero sacks, yeah. zero interceptions, 21 for 30. Yeah. And I know Mahomes had 446 passing yards, but he threw it 68 times. We were this so, close to greatness. This close. Yeah. Um, Tua's doing it. He's got two of the best playmaking receivers in the game and the dolphins i actually they yeah. they left some plays off, like they left points off the board on the field a couple they couldn't convert a few fourth downs i don't think their offense has actually reached its full potential yet but the bears after fitz magic criticizes the way they're using justin fields uh they lean into his ability to run and what does he do yesterday he passes michael vick for the most rushing yards in a regular season game by a quarterback, uh, 178. And they still lost. Uh, there should have been like a pass interference on the, the final drive there. Yeah. But it's, uh, I don't know what my point is. I just don't know which team to enjoy watching the offense with week to week. Because <laughs> oh, it changes. I mean, like, you look at the Bengals, right? Like the Bengals, Joe Mixon, good God. Like, we had five touchdowns yesterday. Guy yes. absolutely destroyed and then you go back to last week and they absolutely got the crap kicked out of them by the Browns. Cause they just look terrible. Like Burrow's getting hit. The O-line couldn't do anything. And it's just, there is really a lot of inconsistency in the NFL. I know tree has touched on this too, but like, I think speaking to our title, like the level of like NFL play has definitely decreased this year. And like the fact that we're in November and there's still this many teams that are not playing consistent football, it's like, oof. Yeah. And, like, my fear at this point is the the NFL is going to look, if it doesn't change, the NFL is going to look at their uh, their rule book this offseason, and they're going to be like, look, passing touchdowns were down, passing yeah. yards were down, and they're going to try and figure out a way to make it what one one more one more little nugget to make it easier for NFL offenses to score, and I don't want to see that. They're they like they're emphasizing yeah. illegal contact. Oh my god, I'm just seeing shirtless Kirk Cousins dancing on an airplane. Oh my god, it literally things cannot get worse. Wow, things cannot get worse. Ooh, he's kind of he's pretty good shape, old Kirk Cousins. That's a hot Jeffrey Dahmer over there. You're just, I literally see you biting your lip and looking to the side like, hmm. Hmm. Mm. You can take me to Coles. <laughs> hey, I can appreciate another man's body. Son, listen, I bet he's got Coles cash. I would like days. to eat some sushi off of that washboard ab Kirk Cousins, let me tell you. Yeah, so I did watch the Northmen this weekend, so maybe uh, it's a sign for the Did Vikings. you like it? Yeah, I did. Very violent. Yeah, I saw it in theaters. Yeah. Jess uh, gave up after an hour. She's like, uh, she's like, I'm going to put on uh, something else on my iPad. <laughs> this is a lot. This is a I lot. I said, this movie is weird, and it is weird. I am all for it. Okay, so let's talk about, we talked about the Bears, the Dolphins. Let's talk about the Vikings. Let's just keep it going with the NFC North. Uh, the Vikings having their hands full with the Commanders, and... Listen, Perna, it hasn't worked for the Packers, but I did Venmo the refs in that one. And so that is why Curtis Samuel was able to get that touchdown yeah. against the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, so that that was me. I wanted to take responsibility for that, uh, but it was not enough because commanders who look pretty like they were solid. They had their come from behind win against the Colts last week. They They gave the Vikings some problems. Yeah. Commanders are on the up 
and up. That play, though. <laughs> Great play. Where, where the ref takes out, uh, I don't know who he, which Viking defender he took out. But Taylor Heineke just chucks up a ball into triple coverage. Yeah. He's just like, it's fine. And fine. Curtis Samuel comes down with it, and he's not touched. And then he he tumbles into the end zone. It was... It was beautiful, um, but, you know, they're the commanders. So even though they're they're playing better, they, they, they were not enough for the Vikings. And one TJ Hawkinson is a nice add yep. to Minnesota. I think he had nine catches yep. in his debut. After a week, that's pretty impressive. Like, I expected his role player. to be limited. <laughs> nope. Here's nine catches for you, TJ. Uh, and what was funny is the Lions, they scored with all of their other tight ends, Tom. Some I'm dude I, I never even fucking heard of. Zilstra. Z- yeah. Zer- no. Zera Sutra. Just, it was keyboard smash. Like, that's yeah. who it was. Yeah. Who's this tight, uh, tight end wide open? Touchdown. Jared. That's what's really frustrating about that Packers loss, Tom. Is that, is that it's not like the, 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 the Lions did anything on offense. No. No, they did nothing. They scored really. 15 points. We yeah. were down eight, nothing. And I was like, that might be the dagger. And there was three quarters left to play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like the way the Lions offense has worked earlier in the season, they were running the, the heck out of the football with Williams and Swift. Swift still not healthy yet. What? Just like two or three carries or something. You know, much, uh, yeah. Amon Ross St. Brown was like having eight to 10 catches over a hundred yards and a touchdown every game. So yeah, you uh oh Shane Zilstra was a former Viking too. Love it. Love it. Um I knew this anyway. morning would hurt. Yeah. Was that it's every it, it was every Broncos game this season. Now here's here's the best part. Broncos beat the Jaguars in London. It's not impressive, but they beat them. They go into their bye week. Okay. So there then the go. Yagi Wires got to play the Raiders. <laughs> and the Raiders are up 17 to 0 against the Yagi Wires. And I'm like, dang, the AFC West is crazy. Like, the Raiders get shut out last week. And now they're just going to wreck the Viking or the uh, Jaguars. And the Broncos could barely yep. hold on and beat Jacksonville. The Broncos are going to be the worst team in the division. And then old, old Joshie McDaniels coaches up his his team. Devontae Adams has like, I, th- I think he's the second leading receiver in terms of yards this week. He, yeah, he was killing it this week. And he has zero uh, yards in the second half. The Raiders yep. blow their third 17-point lead of the season. I'm sorry, Guillermo. I am sorry which apparently they've only blown five 17 point leads all year long. I mean, since they, the, the team started in 1960, they do three this year, three this year, three this year with Josh McDaniels to the Jaguars. So Devontae uh, kind of called him out too. And was like McDaniels. And he was just like, why are we getting away from what's working? Like there has to be conversations here because like what they were doing was working and then they just stopped doing it. Yeah, I don't huh. understand that. I mean, the Titans did the same thing, but Packers didn't even start doing it. So, yeah, you just got to find what's working first. <laughs> That's the Packers good. and the Broncos. We just got to find what's working. Then we'll keep doing it. We'll keep doing that thing once we can find it. We just we don't know where it is. We don't know where it is. So, yeah, Josh McDaniel's starting to look like a horrible hire for the Raiders. We tried to warn you guys. Not as foes, but as friends. We said, don't. <laughs> don't do this, man. This is an abusive relationship, and you want no part of this shit. No. This guy is a terrible coach. Probably a worse person. <laughs> I don't know. Does he cheat on his taxes? Maybe. Steal from charity? No, he's no Brett Favre, but he's... No. He, ain't, he ain't it. He ain't it. But it brought me great joy to see Jacksonville do that. So thank you, Duval. Uh, speaking of your division, uh, Chargers Falcons, <laughs> Falcons, man, like, yeah. come on, you're up 10, nothing in the first, after the first quarter, 
Like, come on, man. It's just like, who could choke away this game more? Is it the Chargers or the Falcons? Two teams that are infamous for it. And the answer was both. (laughs) That was the answer. And the Falcons double fumble. That just... Somebody... Cherry on top of the cake. Somebody needs to make a meme where it's where it's two people giving each other the Heimlich maneuver at the same time because they're both choking and one's mm-hmm. in a Chargers jersey and one's in a Falcons jersey. Yeah. Uh, to be fair to the Chargers, they had nobody. Uh, they had the Titans receiving core in this game. <laughs> yeah. No, Keenan Allen still hurt. Mike Williams doesn't play. Uh, I forget who all the guys they're missing. Um, but that's that's why their passing game you know, struggling a little bit there, but ha- like we were going to be excited for this Falcons Panthers Thursday night game. And now the Falcons choke away a game to the chargers and the Panthers just get destroyed by the Bengals. Poor PJ Walker had a QB rating of zero before they put Baker Mayfield in there. Oh, wow. Frank Reich just got fired. Frank Reich got fired. They just fired Frank Reich. Dang, I was wondering if they're going to, but (sighs) yep, that I I, can't be terribly surprised with that. I mean, the Colts have been embarrassingly bad, and that's coming from a Packers fan. But what was it, 26 to 3 yesterday? Like, they the Colts got issues, like, oh, yeah, I mean, big, big issues. There's, they don't have a quarterback. Um, no. <laughs> oh, Frank. Man. Oh, Frank. Damn. Hey, so- Denver, bring in Frank Reich as offensive coordinator. Dude, this is bad. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. I don't even know. Dude, Sam was sacked nine times. Yeah. Nine. You know how many points the Packers scored? Nine. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think uh, that's probably an overreaction. Um, I'm not saying, like, the Colts are horrible this year. Their offense is really bad. But Sam Ellinger, was he's not good. And he goes against, like, before this game, I said, Belichick's in the Patriots, they're going to rock Sam. Oh, they're going to kill him. Uh, that's just what he does to inexperienced quarterbacks. Um, but it, it was clear though that Jim Irsay was kind of done with Frank Reich. It's it, it seemed like that writing was on the wall a little bit. I thought he'd make it through the season, but dang, yeah, they had no offense. They like were going three and out every single time they touched the ball. The Titans. We'll talk about them. Um, damn. Yeah. No, yeah, I don't think that's an overreaction though, because I think like that franchise right now they're stuck. Like, what do you do? You don't have a QB, right? So like, that's a problem. Now you don't have a a head coach. Their offense is so stagnant. Their offensive line is nowhere (laughs) as good as it was. Their defense was supposed to be like a little bit of a bright spot. That hasn't been the case this year. Well, their defense was solid. It's just when your offense is that bad, it takes a toll on your defense. Oh, I know. (laughs) Oh, I no, I think the the real story there, Tom, is that uh, Nick Sirianni was very valuable to Frank very. Reich in the Colts' offensive success. Like yep. he was there the year they had Rivers, right? It was Reich, Rivers, Sirianni, and then Sirianni gets the job with the the Eagles, and everyone's like, "Dang, this seems like a weird hire." Uh, but the Eagles' offense, pretty good pretty damn good <laughs> so i think without him yeah frank reich struggled it's same thing with matt lafleur right now they and it's it's not even like a knock on lafleur but you he lost there's three guys gone that he relied on for help with the there offense. should be knocks on the floor no there should be knocks on the floor no i'm not saying there shouldn't i'm saying like knock. you lose three of your trusted yes people on one side of yeah. the ball like that's that's a tough thing to overcome. Yep. And we're seeing how tough it is even when you have really good quarterbacks. Uh the only well the Rams was Kevin O'Connell their OC in LA? I think so, yeah. So the Rams lose Kevin O'Connell. The Buccaneers 
Tom Brady forces Bruce Arians to early bird special. So they, they make a change. Packers lose three of their, their offensive guys. Maybe there's something about that yeah. as well. Maybe yeah. coaches are important. I don't know. Yeah. It it's, it's tough, but the, so we'll talk about the Vikings again, because someone wants to talk about the Vikings. They they're playing ugly ass football, but they continue to win. Like that's, but that's every week. It's every week. So there's really not much even more to say about them. Like they're getting the W's. That's all that matters at the end of the day. They kind of do remind me a bit of the 2019 Packers in which they're like just squeaking out some wins. They're going to make it to the playoffs and then we'll see what happens. I just don't think they look that great. But then again, the NFC doesn't look that great. So. Yeah, let's see here. Yeah. Dang. The Colts right now, too, with a three, five and one record, have the 14th pick in the draft. Yep. So they can't even they can't even save their uh team right now with a quarterback. So there's Matt Rule's gone. Frank Reich's gone. They just fired their OC, didn't they, too? The Colts? Didn't they fire their offensive oh, coordinator? Was that the week like, I think last week? Right. Yeah. Was it Brady? Joe Brady? No. Tom Brady. Gary Brady. David Brady. Hold on. Hold on. T Tim Brady. Hold on. Marcus Brady. Yeah, they fired Marcus him last week. Brady. Yeah. Marcus Brady him. bunch. Yeah. They're like going through and they're like, all right, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. <laughs> nope. All right, let's just keep on clearing house. I so. think we've made it to that point in the season where we can start looking at the oh, Tankathon yeah. draft order. I thought we have but, the eighth overall pick. I guess I'm wrong. Nine. Look at you. We've we're giving Seattle uh the eleventh. Luckily. We got the 20th right now from the Niners. <laughs> Need them to suck. Let's see here. The so, Raiders could be in position to draft their next QB. Wow. This is yeah, crazy. I mean, well, you look at this, right? Houston's going to draft a QB. Carolina's likely to draft a QB. Vegas might draft a QB. Detroit wants to draft a QB. I don't think Jacksonville will. And Arizona won't. And Chicago won't. Detroit needs to they the Lions really should not have won yesterday. They should have just thrown the game. They have no business winning. The Speaking of winning, <laughs> oh, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Boom! Dun 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 dun. It's DraftKings Sportsbook. Sundays are for football, food, friends, and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. And right now, new customers, all new customers can sign up using our code GPS. It's the name of the show, so don't you can't forget it. Uh, and if you bet $5 on any pregame money line wager, you'll receive an additional $200 in free bets if you'll bet right. cashes. That's with code GPS. Link in the description. We also got basketball is here, right? Tom has converted to basketball fan. Uh, so there's tons of ways to get in on the action with some hard court dunking, dribbling basketball between the legs. These guys are wearing short shorts. Well, at least they should be. Bring back the short shorts <laughs> and make that happen with code GP. S uh, parlays stack those bets for larger sized payouts. Again, it is, it is code GPS $200 in free bets. If your bet cashes with a free game money line wager link in the description, only DraftKings Sportsbook. Swish. Oh. I've been, I just uh, finished the redeem team. The uh, documentary about the uh, Redeem team. I've learned so much from this sentence. Uh, it's the Olympic basketball team mm. where LeBron, Kobe, D Wade, Carmelo, uh, Chris Bosch, uh, they come together and get America the gold again. It's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Uh, I don't think either of our teams on a path to redeem themselves this football season. I don't but it that. shows a lot about how a team needs to come together to win. Hmm. 
Or you could just have Joe Mixon. Or throw, have Joe Mixon rush for four touchdowns and catch one. Yep. Yeah, they looked amazing against the Panthers yesterday. They scored 28 points in the second quarter alone. And Baker Mayfield wound up getting in the game, replacing P.J. Walker, because they were just trying to get something going. And Baker threw two touchdowns, went 14 for 20, 155 yards. Love, it was yeah. like, you know, it was it's later clean in the game. Up duty. But... Clean up an aisle, Baker Mayfield. But the Panthers definitely get there to be looking for a new franchise QB. Uh, this upcoming uh, draft Bengals. I don't know what to say about them. Every time I put them in the top 10, they suck the next week. So I've been asked by Bengals fans to stop putting them in the top 10. And I might have to listen to them here because when I don't, they play well. I don't. <clears throat> yeah, they don't are. Know. They're an EKG. They are just ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. They're in a division where they can afford to do that, though. I mean, we'll yeah. see how the Ravens play tonight against the Saints. We'll see what either team, which one shows up. But they can. So they can still win the division. It's just going to be – it's going to be something. So I don't know. Their offense looked good yesterday, though. Uh, let's talk about your team, Brandon Perna. We on a bye, Biatch. No, the team that you left for. The oh, Buffalo kill. all the way this time. Got a couple problems. Need Josh Allen to stop throwing the interception. So if I'm not mistaken, Perna, the teams that you're a fan of, you know, you hopped on over to the Bills bandwagon. And now all of a sudden they're losing to the Jets. All of a sudden. I've been on this bandwagon for like four or five years now. That's how bad it's been. Know, wearing country. Buffalo Bills stuff. And now a little bit of a cursy curse going on. Hey, curse. Look, Josh Allen just got to clean up his game. He said, I played like shit. Hard to win when I play like shit. And he ain't lying. Uh, second thing. Uh, it is not. It is hard to beat the Jets when their secondary is allowed to pass interfere every play. So welcome to the club, Bills fans. Sucks watching Sauce Gardner hold all of your receivers and not get flagged for it. Is he even good? I don't know. He gets to hold every damn play. Every play. And as a Broncos fan, it hurt because we watched one Damari Mathis get flagged four times for pass interference the week before. So I get it. Uh, but yeah, it's just, like the, the Bills problem is pretty simple. Don't throw interceptions, Josh. You know how to you know how to play better than that. Sounds like somebody got lost in the sauce. Mm. And I can say that because we lost mm. to the Jets. So and you yeah. lost to the Jets. We all yeah. lost to the Jets. Yeah, Jets defense is very good though. Uh outside not- of that, like I love what their secondary does. Uh their defensive line could get after guys. And we saw we saw Zach Wilson not suck and they beat a good football team. So that's basically the, the game plan moving forward for the Jets is have Zach Wilson not suck, and they'll be okay. They'll be aight. We, we talked about it like 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Um. Yes, and you know what? Like, the Jets are a team that is going to be, like, with their coaching and, like, the way that they play, their physical, the AFC East has – not a single team with a losing record right now, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> and division's crazy. It is wild right now. So are the Patriots still at the bottom? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Jets are in second place. It's Bills, Jets, Dolphins, Patriots. Dang, dang that's crazy. So um, if yeah. Zach Wilson can actually like be good and i think that he has the coaching staff like to potentially support him obviously Brees hall coming back like next year hopefully he doesn't really miss a step they they're gonna be a a solid football team i think like they have a bright future and they crushed it in this draft so yeah they had a great draft um and i think like this season uh the combo of of michael carter and james robinson will suffice and michael carter actually he played he was better than james robinson there uh this week against the bills so it's just it's that division is funny and i'm i really do hope the patriots finish at the bottom of it and they have a winning record 
that's the chaos now I have to root for. That's fair. Uh, 5280, 5,280 people watching. It's also the elevation of Denver. Broncos going to the playoffs, confirmed. Yeah. Oh, and, and I did want to discuss the, my team just for a second, Tom, because I was watching uh, Good Morning Football this morning. Uh, it's a, it's like a NFL show where they talk about football. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but um, they had a guest on, a guest host, German-born Marcus Kuhn, who was teammates with uh, Russell Wilson in college. And he says... Russell Wilson has always been weird. He says Russell Wilson uh, at NC State. So this was before Russ transferred over to uh, Wisconsin or whatever. He gave some examples of Russ like uh, showing up to open the, the door for the, uh, the coaches uh, before like practice <laughs> and was saying like, I don't know why you guys are dumping on him. This is just who Russell Wilson is. You're calling him inauthentic, but it's not like he's, this is the guy. And he's they were trying, the they were trying to find some cracks there so they could poo poo on Russ and some more. And he was just like, no, you know, and then he gets drafted to play baseball. Uh, so we're like, maybe, well, maybe this guy's doing something right. So it was just an interesting perspective uh, on Russell Wilson. I thought. And it confirms what I've, I said when the Broncos uh, brought him in. He's just a weird dude. He's just a weird dude. And now he just needs to play well. And yeah, Geno Smith, you could throw him in the MVP conversation. Go for it, Seattle. Why the fuck not? I think when you're talking about Russell Wilson, like holding the door open for coaches, like that doesn't sound like that's like, okay, whatever. But like, I like to think that Russell Wilson, like a lot arrives at the facility, like two and a half hours early just to hold the door open. Yeah. Well, he can't he's, even get in yet because the door's locked, but he's just yeah. there. Two and a half hours he's just like waiting. He's yeah. just like, oh, when that assistant coach gets here, I'm yeah. going to hold that door open. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So you want to talk about him? Yeah. I mean, Gino Smith's Smith playing. Smith he's Seattle balling. Seahawks. He's Gino is straight balling. And you know what? You know what was hard though. Yesterday, Noah Fant had a great game, and <laughs> Shelby <laughs> Harris had a great game for Seattle. Yes. As a Broncos fan, you're just like, damn. Damn. Luckily, Greg Dulcich, he's re he's replacing Noah Fant's production. Our defense is good, but I loved Shelby Harris. He was one of my favorite defensive players. Mm -hmm. uh, funny dude. But, man, yeah, Seattle atop the NFC West with, what, 6-3? and three? Is that record? And they beat the Cardinals. That's not a surprise. But that game was close. And when yep. they needed plays... Gino made him. Kenneth Walker, man. That was like a, they got a bunch of young studs on that team. They like, had they a hell really of a draft, did. too. They did. Talk they about the Jets it. having a draft. The Seahawks slam dunked it. it. They redeemed teamed it. <laughs> they redeemed teamed it. Yeah, Gino played well. Fan had a good game. Kenneth Walker is that dude. Like yeah. the Seahawks are good. Like they are a good football team. Yeah, Gino would have like he had one bad pass, like it was like a swing pass or some shit mm -hmm. that the the Cardinals pick sixth. Other than that, he was like pretty perfect, and they're just getting used to their quarterback throwing over two fifty, couple touchdowns, making no mistakes. They can run the ball, and their defense has slowly gotten better. Early in the season, that's what was basically kind of holding them back. Correct, um, and now. Uh, Tariq Woolen's great. Kobe Bryant's playing, making plays for him on defense. Just, uh, they're good. Yeah, which is scary because, like, again, like this was supposed to be like they were going to be terrible, and they still are going to get a good draft pick because of you guys. Like, that's wild. That's not uh, set in stone yet. Broncos are going to have two picks in the twenties once they get to the playoffs, and we get that Forty ers pick. Well, they'll, they'll have they'll have created two. They're only going to have one pick, but that hmm. Seahawks pick is going to be twenty six. Yeah, yeah. Um. Uh. No. Yes. Yes. Dwight it is a little weird, <laughs> but I want the Seahawks to beat the piss out of the 49ers. 
There you go. I, I was gonna root. I was gonna, you know, I, I like Shanahan. I like Christian McCaffrey. I love George Kittle. <laughs> but love now. Jimmy G was gonna find myself rooting for the Niners a little bit. Uh, love Debo Samuel. Like now, I hope all of those guys suck for the rest of the year. Debo Samuel from this point on negative receiving yards. Christian McCaffrey leads the league in fumbles. Jimmy Garoppolo <laughs> throws 30 interceptions. I need that draft pick to be good, 49ers. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, speaking of the Cardinals, by the way, <laughs> Bears are looking good. Bears yeah, Bears good. offense is better. They're looking Dolphins good. offense is good. Um, but yeah, the Cardinals, I mean, like you said, like they kept it close. I know we talked about this about 15 minutes ago now. Um, it should... They're another, they're just a weird football team right now. Like Kyler, he played pretty solid, but like they have no run game beside Kyler Murray. Yeah. Well, one of his runs, he had a great run and then he fumbled the ball. Yeah, they fumbled the ball. It was like, oh, this is a great play. Look at Kyler. Oh, she and fumbled. Done. That's the Cardinal season right there. Yeah. So, I mean, they are now. Uh, are you surprised Frank Reich was fired before Cliff Kingsbury? No, Ooh, I'm not because the Cardinals are weird. The Colts right now, I think they're in like full blown free fall. I like truly, I don't think they know what to do as an organization. Free like they've been trying to get like patchwork with like QBs and it has not worked. And now it's kind of like all coming to a head because Jonathan Taylor, like they were solid. Then they blew it last season uh, at the very end. And yeah, like I think that they are scrambling to try and find something that they can salvage for this season. So, oh, yeah, I got Broncos people saying Frank Reich should be their head coach next season. <laughs> Send Hackett Twitter. back to Green Bay. Uh, that's uh, a lot of Jesus in the locker room between Russell Wilson and Frank Reich. They can have a Jesus didn't, didn't work with Wentz. Uh, Philip Rivers, they made it work. He's a big Jesus guy, too. <laughs> big Jesus guy. Big fan. Loves him in the combine. Big Jesus guy. A um, lot of quarterbacks are big Jesus guys. Do you think that's because they're narcissists, Tom? Like they feel like they're the chosen one and that's kind of the mindset you have to have to get to the NFL. I don't know anything about my QB being a narcissist. So no, he's, he's a, uh, he is the rare atheist narcissist. I think, he's, or his my, God my, is now I, very uh, earthy, very universal type God. Whatever. It's an energy. It's not a deity. Uh, it's an energy. Just do, just do what you got to do. Um, so let's talk about the game that I'm so happy I did not. Stream. I want to talk about Jesus, Tom. <laughs> you're, trying to, you're trying to steer me away from this. I'm trying to steer you from the subject. Uh, Rams Buccaneers. <laughs> you know you want to talk about this. You're so upset too that Brady like let a comeback, and that's what people are talking about. Oh too. my god! I was starting to get used to the Brady losing every week. That was a little, that was a tough pill. You know, I knew they were going to win based on the feeling in my stomach when I had that game on. I literally started to get a little nauseous and I'm not <laughs> kidding. Like, I'm not saying that to be funny. I was like, this is the feeling I get when Tom Brady is about to, to win a football game that he didn't earn. And boy, he just had to be less shitty than the Rams offense. And they were. Uh, to be fair, he did throw a touchdown pass to Scotty Miller, and old Scooty Miller let the ball bounce off his face. Uh, and I think the Bucks had to settle for a, a field goal in that situation. But yeah, the Bucks can't run the football. Their offense is one dimensional. Every time Brady does, like, if you're looking at like Rodgers and Brady and Stafford and even Russell Wilson. Brady's still throwing the best football right now, which is hmm. disgusting. He misses he misses more throws than we're used to seeing with Palm, but he's getting less help from his playmakers. And really, Cade Otten came out at tight end and saved the Buccaneers. But that was that I did not like seeing that at all, Tom. Had uh the the Packers not choked to the, the Lions, I may have done a new, 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 new worst game with the uh, Bucks and Rams because it was pretty awful. And did you see Jalen Ramsey after the game? No. 
Oh, he threw the offense under the bus so hard. Did he? He was like, the defense should not be asked to go out there and stop the opposing offense again. When we got them the ball back with like a minute and a half left and no timeouts, he's like, at some point, your offense, like, they have to do something. It was basically, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. But he was not happy. So, anyway. Cooper Cup did well. He always does. He's just like, I'm trying. It loads eight for 127 and a tutty, 15.9 average. And then there's Allen Robinson, three for 24. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> like that. The, the Rams offensive line is just atrocious. And it's Vita Vea was a game wrecker. If you want to give the, the win to somebody on the Bucks, Vita Vea was just it's a great player. He was all up in Stafford's face, a couple sacks. And that's a guy I like to see do well. Like, how do you not like Vita Vea? <sighs> Vita Vea loca. Ricky Martin. And then finally, last night, you had the Tennessee Titans going up against the Chiefs. And listen, that first half, the Titans, like, they had a great game plan. I loved what they were doing. They were handing the ball off to Derrick Henry, and then they were using, like, you know, QB options in which, like, he, they were, he was taking it because they had to, like, watch out for Henry, and it was ripping off chunks of yards. Like, it was really good. And then they were like, what if we didn't? And just that second half was abysmal. Like, they didn't do anything. They got a pick, like, deep into Chiefs territory, only resulted in a field goal, barely moved the ball. And they just did nothing in that second half. And, you know, we can crap on Ryan Tannehill a lot. It's just like Malik Willis is not ready. Um, and they they really didn't ask him to throw the ball a whole lot. He went five for 16, you know, but it it just wasn't great. He had that one big play, but it wasn't even him when he dumped it off I think, to their tight end, like in the very beginning. And he like ran up to like the 35 yard line of the Chiefs. But yeah, Titans, you, you need some wide receivers. Because, yeah, <laughs> it's a little rough. It's a little, it's, little rough. It's uh, a deficiency has never been so so clear. Yes. I love AJ Brown tweeting during that game, too. And he was just like, they got no receivers. Yeah. So, yeah, Todd Downing is also terrible. Yeah, no, he is not good. Um, but the Chiefs, I mean, like. The, Mahomes man like got sacked four times like he was constantly under pressure like the defense played well too you know I think that like the Titans they're gonna win their division because that division is so so bad yeah but yeah as much crap as uh the the Packers took for not adding like a receiver at the trade deadline the Titans the Titans should have been a, a team trying to get uh, another playmaker for that offense. They got uh, Burks. But that ain't, he ain't it. Nope. He didn't did he play yesterday. He didn't catch he did. I didn't see him. Um, is he hurt? The, the Titans, what's interesting, yeah, like they were, they were getting pressure. Return from IR. That's why he's hurt. Okay. They they were getting oh, pressure, you know, uh with their their four man pass rush. And Mahomes was it's just it, this is what I hate about watching Patrick Mahomes when you're playing against him. Dude, is he is the slipperiest little devil back behind the line of scrimmage. And I what I hate is the way he does it. It is so annoying. Because he looks goofy when he runs. And it's just like, why can't anybody tackle this guy? Yeah. It's not like he looks like super fast, right? Like Lamar Jackson makes one guy miss and then he takes off for like 60 yards. And you're like, dang, that guy's just faster than everybody. Mahomes is not faster than everybody, but he's slippery. He's it's slippery. like 30 19. And it's just like, okay, I'm like going to walk a little bit. All right, now I'm going to cut inside a little bit. Then I'm going to go this way. Oh, look, I picked up 20 yards. Yeah. It's so frustrating. And this was. Like it was a Mahomes game where he kept the the Chiefs in it, and then the uh, the overtime drive where they scored a field goal, the Titans still had a chance. But in addition to that, what we're we're used to seeing like Tyreek Hill be the guy that makes like the crazy catch. Travis Kelsey makes a crazy catch. Uh, Juju Smith Schuster makes a, a really impressive catch, and then Gray, who the hell is their other tight, their third tight end? 
something gray uh just makes an insane catch an insane deep ball catch yes. and you're like how are you going to stop this team if literally any player running routes can take not a great ball and turn it into you know a positive so uh that like it was an impressive win for the Chiefs after it was like kind of a shitty game for them. And yeah. then the Titans, you just saw how limited they are offensively. What's this? Oh, I want to show you this video real quick. Yeah, Vikings, ugly wins, but getting the dubs. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. He runs like a toddler being chased by his parents. That's amazing. Yeah, um, I have a toddler. I concur. Andy Herman does great work. Just posted this too. So, Rodgers, pretty good pocket. Throw it right now. Throw it right now. Throw it right now. Uh, Looks right. away. That's probably a touchdown. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's not good. No, he's probably, it's the same thing I've seen with Russell Wilson. Every week, we get 20 of those guys showing all the mistakes old Russ made. Uh, Rogers probably looking at that outside receiver read. Uh, I'm not saying he shouldn't see the open receiver right there, uh, but yeah. It's just been there, the back check MVP to look at, like, see the field better. And, like, again, yeah. it's not all on Rodgers. Rodgers played god awful yesterday, but like, and it's like that game that's on Rodgers, but there's a lot of other issues right now. Yeah. So, and the, the Lions defense played well too. They made some plays. There were a couple plays that were, it wasn't like Rodgers or the Packers. It was just the Lions defense played better. Derek Barnes used his face like a, a, a defensive back. Um, Kirby Joseph, right? Kirby Joseph, a couple picks. Kirby Joseph, yep, picked off. Rogers One great Barnes. pass defense. Like, yeah, was, so, I don't know what's going to happen, man. Maybe, uh, maybe you guys bring in Frank Reich. <laughs> you can Reich I, the ship. <laughs> We're going to suck. We're going to suck. Like, that's uh, – but – if there is any game that we win for the rest of the year, I'm talking even over the Vikings and Bears. Oh my God, if we beat the Cowboys. If we don't when win you play Dallas? game When's... next week, it's Sunday. Oh, wow. You guys are going to get just clubbed. We might die. Yeah, we might die. There's a good chance we die. Like if the Cowboys were a, an offensive team, I'd say this. Th you guys might have a chance, but the way their defense been getting at QBs, <sighs> Dom, what you got coming out later today, baby? Uh, I got a short that I'm working on. That'll be out probably in a few hours. Um, I also want to make a Packers video of like how did we get here. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that out today. Uh, every NFL fan's reaction to week nine coming out after Monday Night Football, streaming Monday Night Football, and that's what's coming out today. Tight, you, Perna, best and worst of NFL week nine. There you go. There you go. Uh, don't know if I'll do a Frank Reich video or not. Yeah. It's so funny, like, uh, coaches getting fired, nobody really cares. <laughs> No. no. All right. Well, it's going to uh it's going to be something. But folks, we had over 5,000 people in here. Appreciate you for checking us out. We're here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday for GPS at 11 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Mountain Time. Yep. Yes, yep. it is, Charlie. But folks, thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassi. That's Brandon Perna. This is GPS. And you've been navigated. I'm in hell. That's where you've been navigated to. It's fiery here. It hurts. Burns your destination. Skin.